Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with what I'm thinking will probably be a pretty chatty video about my reading habits. Uh, so this is essentially going to be a video all about how I read uh, and whether or not I like books more in certain formats, like audiobook, ebook, physically, uh, how fast I read. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a really chatty video that I was inspired to do because I got to thinking about this during my last weekly reading vlog. I will link that up above if I remember to. And in that reading vlog, I talked about the fact that I DNF'd a book because I didn't like the audiobook narrator, uh, because voices really make or break audiobooks for me. So I do have a thing about voices. I was interested to hear if any of y'all felt the same way, and plenty of you did. Uh, and a lot of you had really interesting thoughts on format because also in that vlog, I commented on the fact that I think I read faster uh, when I'm reading an ebook, when I'm reading on my Kindle. And so I decided that maybe what I should do is put that to the test, that maybe I should try to read something on ebook physically and something in kind of like a classic genre and time myself uh, to see how fast I really do read. But really, I just kind of wanted to make this video to start a discussion about uh, how you feel about reading and how you read. Uh, and so let's do that first. And then I will get into kind of the numbers crunching about how fast I read, uh, because I found that to be very interesting. I don't know that I did it correctly, uh, so I will save that for the last, but I thought we could kind of go over um, different formats of books and whether or not my enjoyment differs on them, and I know that it does um, in terms of audiobooks. I think I am extremely forgiving with audiobooks because it took me a very long time to actually like audiobooks, if that makes sense. Uh, to a certain extent, I really enjoy nonfiction audiobooks, and I enjoy them pretty generally. Uh, and also pretty generally, the narrator's voice doesn't really affect me as bad in a nonfiction book, I guess because they aren't really putting on voices. They're not trying to do any kind of extreme accents. And so there's less of a point of annoyance for me in nonfiction, but I really find, you know, fiction audiobooks, I have always found them cheesy. And I've really, really hated them because I hate the fake voices. Um, I hate hearing anybody do anything kind of over dramatic. And I know they have to do this so that we can distinguish who's talking, but I genuinely hate it. And so it's taken me a long time to kind of get adjusted to that style of doing things. And it's also actually become pretty clear to me that that's also a narrator's choice. Uh, so sometimes you get a narrator who seems very overdramatic uh, and who does a lot of these weird voices, but sometimes you will also get a narrator that doesn't talk that way, and thus it makes the audiobook experience far more enjoyable. But because I have struggled with audiobook as a format, specifically in fiction, uh, I am very forgiving, I think, with the actual book, because I know that to a certain extent, I don't enjoy the fact that I'm listening to it or I don't necessarily like the narrator. And so I want to kind of give the book the benefit of the doubt that had I read it physically, had another narrator narrated it, that I might have enjoyed it more. And I also think listening is just an entirely different medium. And I think you connect to the story in a very different way when you're listening to it. Um, I think that I look back on the experience a little bit more fondly when I have listened to, to an audiobook um, than when I read it physically. Some books that I would read physically and probably give two and a half, three stars, I'll give four stars to if I listened to them. I'll admit that I do still struggle with audiobooks for fiction. And so at the end of the day, this is my least favorite format. Um, I would definitely read something physical over reading an audiobook any day of the week. I do really enjoy listening to classic audiobooks, audiobooks for classics, and that's something I would never have expected in a million years. But I think it does make some classics that you would think are really dense and hard to read on paper, I think it makes them a little bit more approachable when you listen to them said aloud. Uh, I think hearing something aloud does help you quite a bit with classics. Uh, and so I do really tend to like audiobooks of classics, and I still love audiobooks of nonfiction. 
The second format I want to talk about is ebooks. So I do have a Kindle. I have a Kindle Paper White, which was revolutionary to me. Uh, I was never going to become a Kindle person. I always felt that in my soul that I could never become a Kindle person until I found the Kindle Paper White with the light in it. Uh, the Kindles prior to that that didn't have an internal light were so extremely difficult to read, in my opinion. But I do love my Kindle Paper White, and anytime I travel, that's typically what I take with me. Me. Now, I have to be in a certain type of mood to read on my Kindle. Uh, there are some times when I just really want to read an ebook, uh, and so that kind of dictates when I pick up my Kindle and when I stick with something physical. But usually, when I read one book on ebook, I kind of get in the mood to continue reading on my Kindle. And when I've spent a long time away from my Kindle, it's very difficult for me to get back into it. It's very difficult for me to want to pick my Kindle back up. And so I tend to forget about the books that I have on Kindle. I tend to forget that Kindle is an option uh, because I primarily use my library digitally. So I use it for eBooks. And so I often will forget to check the library for things because I just really do generally prefer to read physically. I do really love to have nonfiction on ebook. That is something that I do think I really enjoy. Uh, I'm really torn on nonfiction because there are quite a few titles of nonfiction that I would like to kind of add to my collection, uh, kind of my reference shelf. This is one of my reference shelves that you see behind me all the time. Uh, so these are books that I'm constantly pulling off and kind of looking at making reference to uh, because there are often references in other works. And specifically with nonfiction, I always kind of like to come back to it if I am reading something else about the same time period. So in many ways, I would love to have a physical copy of most nonfiction books that I love. But at the same time, a lot of nonfiction is huge. I mean, it's a massive brick. Uh, and I really struggle with reading a larger book physically. And so in that regard, I really like to have nonfiction on my Kindle and I really like to read a nonfiction ebook. Now, I do struggle with kind of um, making notes on my Kindle. I know that's a thing you can do, uh, but I do tend to make a lot of notes when I'm reading nonfiction. I tend to underline a lot. I do love the highlighting system on a Kindle. I love that you can highlight things because it's actually very easy to reference back to. But uh, I do think note taking also kind of skews me towards physical books in that regard. But I will say a weird thing with me anyway, is if I start to read a series of books on ebook, uh, so like, let's say the Last Kingdom series by Bernard Cornwell, this is true. Um, if I read the first one on ebook, I then want to read the rest of the books in that format. And I kind of feel the same way about physical books. If I have read the first book physically, I really want to read the rest of them physically. I feel like that's something that's probably pretty personal to me, but if it's not, please let me know. Uh, I do tend to kind of stick with one format for series. I know a lot of people will switch back and forth, but if I have read one book on my Kindle, I want to read the rest of the books on my Kindle. Of course, the last kind of format is reading physically, which is what I prefer. And when I prefer physically, when I say that, I mean I want to trade paperback. I rarely, rarely enjoy reading in hardbacks anymore. That used to be my preferred format before uh, I started kind of developing neck problems, which I actually have developed from reading. Uh, so never let anybody tell you that reading is not a sport because you can injure yourself doing it if you look down too much. And with big hardback books, that's generally what you have to do. And so I now have to kind of make sure that the text is at eye line with me uh, to make sure that I'm not straining. And it's very very difficult to do with a hardback book. Uh, now paperbacks, I just really genuinely love. I love a trade paperback. One thing I don't like is a mass market paperback. I know a lot of people say that now. Uh, that used to really not bother me. And in fact, I preferred it for fantasy books in particular, big fantasy books that could be concisely put into a mass market paperback. My issue with those now is that they wear too easily. And typically the text is a little bit small. Uh, so I do kind of have an issue with the format of mass market paperback. My sweet spot is a trade paperback. So this is a book that I started reading for my experiment, Timing Myself. Uh, so this is a trade paperback and I will just show you why I love it. 
That says it all, doesn't it? It just says it all. And it will stay open too if you want it to. And I also really appreciate that about most trade paperbacks. But when I'm thinking about format, I also think a little bit about genre because I do prefer to read certain genres in certain formats. Uh, so nonfiction, I do read pretty widely, audiobook, ebook, physically. And I kind of am inclined to say that I prefer it on ebook, um, but I do really love to have a physical edition sitting on my shelf. And I also typically really enjoy listening to nonfiction. Uh, so nonfiction goes for anything. Fantasy, I actually am now starting to prefer on ebook as well. I used to really prefer it physically because if there were maps, if there were kind of a list of characters, it's much easier to reference that stuff when you are reading a physical book than reading an ebook. But I actually think it's pretty fun to read fantasy in an ebook now because you can often uh, click on words in a Kindle now and they will tell you, hey, this is an important character. And he popped up earlier in the book if you have forgotten him. If this is a really kind of dense epic fantasy. And I find that useful as well. Uh, so I'm a little bit torn on fantasy, but I would say I'm starting to prefer that on ebook. Now classics I prefer physically. Uh, and the reason I prefer classics physically, I think, is because I like to make a lot of notes. I like to underline. I like to tab. Um, and I like to kind of come back through and flip through things physically. And this specifically goes for poetry. Uh, really poetry, I need to have a physical copy of. And poetry, I have to mark up. Poetry, I have to write on. And I often will come back to poetry more frequently than I will other genres. Uh, so I'll just be going about my day to day and say, you know, I would really love to read um, this portion of the Aeneid again. So I will come down here and pull that off the shelf, flip right there, and then read my notes that I made beside that section. I return to different portions of poetry far more frequently than I do to any other book. I would say I do return to certain nonfiction as well, but it's not as often as poetry. Uh, so poetry, I specifically read physically, and I really enjoy that. Um, but classics in a wider sense, I do prefer physically. And that's an interesting thing to think about because actually nowadays, a lot of classics are free on ebook, but I've actually been uh, kind of burned before with that multiple times. I have gotten abridged versions of classics that way. Um, I have gotten older translations of classics that wasn't the one that I thought that I was getting at the Kindle store. Uh, and so in some ways, I just like the surety that you get when you buy a physical classic. But I'm also somebody who uh, primarily buys things used. I primarily get all of my books used. There are some exceptions to this, um, but I do primarily get classics in particular used. And they're very easy to find used. They are typically at thrift stores. They're at your used bookstore. And often they're in pretty great condition. Uh, so classics I prefer physically. Historical fiction is another one that's rather interesting because I'm starting to prefer that in audiobook. And if you had told me this years ago that I would prefer to read historical fiction in audiobook, I would have thought that you were crazy. But I've read a lot of historical fiction on audiobook recently over the past year, and I just tend to really like it. I don't know if the narrators that they get for historical fiction tend to agree with me. I don't know if it's that a lot of historical fiction um, is written in first person, which does, I think, affect my enjoyment of an audiobook experience. I really enjoy a first person audiobook when I'm reading physically or on my ebook. I prefer third person nine times out of 10. Uh, so it's just really interesting that I think historical fiction does in some ways work better for me in audiobook than in any other physical format. As with everything in this video, please tell me your opinion on this down below. I would love to know if you read certain genres in certain formats more frequently. If you prefer to read a certain genre physically or on ebook or anything like that, because I do think this is a very personal thing. I think everybody is extremely different in what they prefer. But saying all of this aloud makes me feel like I'm actually a very, um, weird reader. It sounds very odd to me to hear it said aloud, but it makes so much sense in my head when I'm thinking about it. But now let's move on to 
kind of my experiment about how fast I read. Uh, so I really want to talk first about something called sub-vocalization. Now, Brian from Bookish did a pretty incredible video about this months ago. If I can find it, I will link to it down below. And he was kind of asking his viewers whether or not they sub-vocalize when they're reading. If you don't know what sub-vocalization is, it is, to my understanding, essentially that little voice you have in your head. And when you are reading a book, it kind of reads it to you and it reads every word on the page. Uh, and so some people apparently don't have this. Some people apparently can kind of skip words on the page. Now, prior to getting on BookTube, I was not somebody who sub-vocalized at all, I would say. I was someone who didn't think it was very important to make sure that you read every word on the page. Uh, and that seems incredibly crazy to a lot of people on BookTube. Uh, but when I did get onto BookTube and it became very important to me to remember specific aspects of books uh, because I was going to review them. So maybe I really wanted to focus on the writer's prose. I wanted to focus on characters. I wanted to focus on a certain moment. It became very important to me to pay attention to every word on the page. And if I thought that I missed something, I would go back to the beginning of the sentence and start again. Uh, and now I'm a little bit more forgiving with myself and say that's just not important. If you missed a line of description about the trees in the forest, it's genuinely not that important. And I think sub-vocalization is always tied to how fast you read. Apparently people who sub-vocalize read a whole lot slower. Uh, and I now kind of am somebody who's in the middle on sub-vocalization. I still love it. And I think it's part of the enjoyment of reading. In truth, this whole experiment is just for fun because I don't really care how fast I read and I'm not interested in reading any faster. I'm not interested in reading more books. I think I'm pretty happy with where I'm at and I'm happy with sub-vocalizing, but this is constantly a tip that you hear for people who want to read faster is that you should try to turn off that little voice in your brain because it actually isn't all that important for you to read every word on the page. So now, like I said, I feel like I'm in the middle on it. It's not that important to me uh, when I'm reading fantasy anymore, um, when I'm reading YA. It's not that important to me to sub-vocalize. Uh, with classics, it is, because a lot of what I enjoy about reading classics is language, is prose. And so I just really think that's part of the experience. And that's part of the reason that I enjoy reading classics is that even though it might take me longer, I really enjoy the process of spending time with the book. So I do sub-vocalize, and I do think that that probably affects my speed in terms of reading. But to kind of get into uh, my experiment here, the numbers are really interesting because I really thought there was going to be more variation here. Now, I did this for a very short period of time. I read for 10 minutes each, with an ebook, um, with a physical fantasy book, and with a physical classic. Uh, and so I was interested really mainly in seeing if I do truly read faster on an ebook uh, because that was my interpretation in last week's weekly reading vlog. Uh, I definitely have always believed that I read an ebook faster. Now, Kayla from Books and La La. Um, did a video about how fast she reads a couple of weeks ago. And it was really interesting. I'll link to it down below. And she definitely went into far more depth with it. And she definitely crunched more numbers. And I think in the end, hers was a more successful experiment uh, because she did it for a much longer period of time. So now I'm curious if I stuck it out for a longer period of time. But she also did a reread. She read a reread and then she read something that was new to her, I think in YA and adult. Uh, and so she was comparing different writing styles from different age groups and also with a book that she had already read to see how fast she read it. Uh, and so I think that was actually probably the smarter thing to do because I did not include a YA in this group and I wish that I had uh, because I do think that maybe that would have skewed me a little bit. So I am reading an ebook right now. I am reading um, Blood of Elves by Andrzej Sapkowski. Uh, this is a book in the Witcher series. So I read for 10 minutes, but this is the one that was tricky to me because on an ebook, 
the pages are not really all that clear. Uh, so I looked up on Amazon, Blood of Elves. It says the paperback copy has 432 pages. Uh, so I did the percent that I read in that 10 minutes. So I read 5% of the book in that 10 minutes. So I times that percentage by the number of pages and it gave me 35 pages basically. And I just don't believe it. I just don't believe that I read 35 pages or the equivalent of 35 pages in a trade paperback on my Kindle. Now I have always believed that you do read a whole lot faster on an ebook. Uh, and I definitely feel like that's the case. That was proven to me in this experiment actually, uh, because even if I've messed things up here, I still definitely read more of this ebook than I did of the other two. Um, but this is an adult fantasy, but it's a very easy to read adult fantasy. These feel very comfort read like to me. Uh, and in some ways they remind me of Bernard Cornwell and the Last Kingdom series, which I always used to devour one of those books in a day. That's how short they are. That's how short they feel to me. And that's how involved you get in them. And so I think this is a similar case to that. I would say had I read maybe a denser fantasy, like maybe I should have started Way of Kings, maybe that would have told us something different, uh, something where I really needed to clearly pay attention to not only the world, but the magic system and the characters, whereas in Witcher, you mainly care about the characters so far for me. Uh, so this one is the one that I read the fastest. So I read more of uh, Blood of Elves than I did of either of the other books. Uh, so when I was reading physically, I decided to read a fantasy book. So a book that I recently picked up is A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel Kay. Uh, and this is an adult fantasy that is set in kind of a fantasy version of Renaissance Italy. I would say that Guy Gabriel Kay's prose is a little bit more complex um, than Andrei Sepkowski's. Uh, so in The Witcher, there is quite a bit of dialogue. And that's basically how the plot moves forward is people having conversations. You're not actually kind of experiencing events so far in Blood of Elves. You are experiencing people talking about them. So Guy Gabriel K is a little bit more on the style of, let's say, a literary fiction author. Uh, his prose is just extremely beautiful, but he does put you in the middle of the action. You do experience things as they're happening with the characters. And this book started with a bit of a bang. Uh, so I read this also for 10 minutes and I managed 10 pages of it. I actually thought that I would have read less than 10 pages in this amount of time uh, with a Guy Gabriel K book because I just do really want to pay attention to his writing. I think his writing is just really beautiful. I think part of my enjoyment of his work so far has been how he has written it. And so I do really enjoy kind of the sub vocalization that happens when I am reading um, something like Guy Gabriel K. Uh, so this is a little bit more of an intense adult fantasy, I would say. Uh, but so we've dropped from around the equivalent of 35 pages to 10 pages. But here is where things really truly flabbergasted me. Uh, so I then picked up a classic. So the classic I decided to pick up uh, is Marriage by Susan Ferrier. And this is a classic of the early 1800s, kind of uh, the Jane Austen, Mary Shelley generation. Uh, so it's on that par of difficulty in terms of prose. I read for 10 minutes. And here is shock of all shocks. I expected this to be so much slower than the guy Gabriel K, but I read 10 pages of this as well. Now here is their size as compared. Uh, so it's not actually all that different, but this is a smaller book and I think there were fewer words on the page, but I am genuinely shocked that I read a classic as fast as an adult fantasy. That truly blows my mind because I have always thought, especially when I'm reading a longer classic, that I am in them for so long. It feels like I stay with classics for an inordinately long amount of time. And I've always kind of forgiven myself for that because I know that the language is a bit denser. But according to this experiment, 
I actually can read a classic from the 1800s at the same speed that I can read a book that was published two years ago. I'm really curious to do this now for a longer period of time, akin to what Kayla from Books and La La did. I believe she tried for half an hour. She tried to see when she got to the 100 page mark. Uh, and so I'm really shocked because apparently on an ebook, I would reach the 100 page mark in 30 minutes, but physically I would only reach page 30. So I really don't believe my calculations for the ebook. I would say this is a very readable book from the first 10 pages and I'm already really interested to see where things go. But like I said, this is published kind of in the same generation of Jane Austen and I don't think Jane Austen's prose is all that dense. I think Jane Austen is a really great place to begin if you were just getting into classics. And so I definitely see that she was of the same generation here and maybe this would change had I read maybe Crime and Punishment or something like that. Maybe I would have only gotten through five pages of Crime and Punishment, whereas I got through 10 of Marriage by Susan Ferrier. Because I do tend to read a lot of 19th century English literature. Uh, so I wonder if I had moved out of my comfort zone a bit there, if that would have affected things. Uh, I am now really curious to know how fast you guys read. Do you read faster than me? And do you read slower than me? Uh, I tend to think that I'm a fairly fast reader, but I also think that in some cases, I'm a slow reader. I would have told you before doing this that I read classics a whole lot slower than I do anything else. Uh, so that's been the most interesting part of the experiment to me. Uh, so I would be interested to do this again with three different books and maybe include a nonfiction in there and a YA because I do think a YA would have affected my timing a little bit. I think I would have gotten through more of a YA book than I did any of these. So in terms of format, it appears that I read the slowest physically, I read faster in an ebook, and then I no doubt read the fastest in an audiobook uh, because you can really charge up an audiobook. You can get it to a certain speed and really get going with it. And you can finish some books in a day on audiobook that would take you a few days physically. Now, I won't say it's all down to the speed with which you listen to an audiobook, uh, because I think I tend to have more opportunities to listen to a book than I do to read one physically. Uh, so throughout the day, I might have the opportunity to listen to two to three hours of an audiobook, whereas I maybe had one hour to read something physically or on ebook. But that was my video all about my reading habits, all about how I read, uh, but specifically how fast I read. And I just found that to be a really interesting experiment. I don't think it was fully successful. Do the 10 minute challenge, time yourself for 10 minutes and see how many pages you get through and tell me about it down below. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.